Mass is the daily Mass for the dead offered for those souls whose uh, names are on the altar. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. We have a duty uh, to pray for the dead. It's part of our, our, our responsibility as being part of the communion <coughs> of, of saints, we call it. The communion and union of those in, in, in purgatory with those on, uh, on earth. So we have a, a, a duty to pray for them. It says in the Mass, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. We also have the Gospel today, the Gospel for the Mass of the Dead. It is the Gospel where our, our Lord is uh, uh, foretelling or telling in advance that people are going to have to have receive Holy Communion. It says, unless you eat my blood, body and drink my blood, uh, you will not have life in you. You will not have life without uh, eating our Lord's flesh and drinking His, his blood. Uh, that's uh, a requirement. Uh, to receive Holy Communion. When our Lord told him that, uh, many people left him. They had seen all the miracles he worked, all the things he worked, but they said, this is a hard saying, and who can hear it? Who can hear it? And they walked away. And they said, we're not going to follow you anymore, uh, Jesus. You're, you're crazy, saying we have to eat your body and drink your blood. Because right? we're not uh, cannibals. You know, go down to Africa and you'll find people happy. Uh, to eat your body and drink your blood, but we don't want to do that. That's what they said, and they walked away, and they said, we're not going to follow you anymore, we're not going to be your disciples anymore, uh, because this is just too hard to say. And our Lord did not explain at that time. So we only learned later that we eat his body under the form of bread, and we drink his blood under the form of wine, uh, and that the bread uh, retains its appearances, but becomes his body, and the wine retains its appearances, becomes his blood. So this is how we eat and drink his flesh, and it's necessary to do this to have life within us. So we have to, to uh, this is what unites us to our Lord. Blessed are the dead who die united to our Lord. So we do not unite to our Lord, of course, by sanctifying grace, but it's the Holy Communion that especially unites us. That's communion, where we have communion with our Lord, and we become especially united to him. In, uh, in, in, a, in a, um, uh, a special way. So Holy Communion is something that we should desire to receive. We should desire to receive Holy Communion. We should make efforts to be always worthy uh, to receive Holy Communion. No, we don't have to say, well, I'm not worthy. We want to always stay worthy to receive Holy Communion. And we want to uh, truly uh, ask our Lord when we do receive Holy Communion to uh, unite us to Him and never let us separate ourselves uh, from Him again, that when it comes time for us to die, we'll die in the Lord. Because most people don't die in the Lord, so they're not blessed. They die separated from the Lord, separated from God, and, they're, uh, and they end up uh, uh, with eternal damnation. Jacinta of Fatima, you know, she died uh, in I don't know, 1919 or 1920, shortly after Our Lady appeared. She died quite young, uh, but uh, she died knowing this new war was going to come. New war was going to come, and, and how many millions would die in this new war? This is what we call the Second World War now. How many millions would die? And uh, she said, and most of them will go to hell. Most of them will go to hell that died in the Second World War. Now, that's not just soldiers, of course, that was many civilians. Many cities were bombed, and many people that weren't combatants uh, also died in that war. The people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they were just uh, you know, making their breakfast or whatever they were doing, and all of a sudden they were dead and went to judgment. So they didn't get a chance to prepare their death and all this. And maybe and some of them surely died in our Lord, but many. And many did not. So all these souls going to hell. So it's important to remain united to our Lord, and I want to look forward to dying with our Lord, and to uh, pray for uh, the sick and the dying that they might uh, uh, get the grace to uh, convert if they need to convert, and that they might die united to our Lord. So we pray for them, and then of course. Uh, 
uh, we pray for those who died. That's what we're praying for today. The ones that denied, united to our Lord. Blessed are the dead. They, the ones in purgatory denied, died, united to our Lord. They just weren't perfect. They had many imperfections, maybe, or a few imperfections, whatever it might be. Well, that's why they're in purgatory. And so we pray for them that they will go to heaven. And they are indeed already blessed. Uh, the blessed souls in purgatory uh, need our prayers. And this is who we are praying for. Uh, today, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.